Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. Living a life for Christ, she's a happy girl. In this episode of the Woman at the Well Ministries podcast, join Kim Miller and Erica Close in a conversation as we walk with Jesus. In today's conversation, we find ourselves in the 40 days before Easter and continue a series of conversations about the week leading up to Jesus' death and resurrection. Join us as we look at these events and their message for our lives. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. We are continuing our series of conversations about the days leading up to Jesus's crucifixion and then his rising from the dead on Easter Sunday. And we have been sort of marching through the week over the last few weeks of our Wednesday podcasts. And today we find ourselves on Friday. We're looking at the Friday of Holy Week. And Friday was a horrific day. And the only reason that many of us call it Good Friday is because it was on this day that Jesus, as the Lamb of God, was sacrificed to make atonement for our sins. Hebrews 9.22 says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And it was on Friday that Jesus shed his blood for our own forgiveness. Now, on his way to the cross, he was subjected to three different religious trials, one before Annas, the former high priest, one before Caiaphas, the acting high priest, and then one before the full Sanhedrin court. He was then put through three Roman trials, one before Pilate, the Roman governor, one before Herod, the Galilean king, and then back again to Pilate. So in a moment, we will pick up our story with Mark's summary of those Roman trials. But first, we're going to take a moment to consider all of the drama that played out during those religious trials. While Jesus was being slapped and spit upon and mocked inside the palace of the high priest, many things were actually also occurring outside the palace. We'll pick up our reading in Matthew chapter 26, beginning in verse 69 and going through 75. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. I want to take a moment for us to think about this in its entirety, before we start giving Peter the business. First of all, I want you to see that Peter was a true man of God. We know this from the scriptures. Yet Peter, when put under great pressure, folded. But the first thing that you see that happens when Peter folds because of this great pressure is that he feels bad about it. He has conviction about it. And my friend, I want us all to know that that is the praising power of the Holy Spirit in us that jerks us back in line. And praise God, we have 1 John 1, 9 that says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I also want you to know that all of us at some point deny 
the power of Jesus that's in us. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20 that we can do exceeding abundantly above all things that we think according to the power that works in us. And some of us don't have enough power to blow our nose. Other people could blow up Mount Everest. But the power of Jesus is the same. It just depends how much of us we give him to use. So those of us who believe have been transformed by the washing of our sins by the sinless, spotless blood of the Lamb of God, yet some of our actions and our thoughts and our lives just don't demonstrate the new creation we are in Christ Jesus. But if we are convicted, we repent and we sin no more because Jesus is our all in all. We can't reach perfection but we strive towards the prize of the high mark. And Peter felt horrible. He felt conviction. He was sorry. He had true repentance. Now, those who say they are Christians and they habitually sin over and over and they don't have any problems with it, my friend, their problem is they are not plugged into the power of Jesus Christ. They probably do not know him as Savior because he says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that old things are passed away and all things have become new. We have to check our faith. And when the Holy Spirit's whispering, hey, don't do that, danger, danger. Oh, you did the wrong thing. That lets you know that you're different than the world because the world doesn't have a problem when they go against Jesus. Friends, you can't be perfect, but you can strive for the perfection that his righteousness puts in you by following him. Let's pick up and take a look at Mark's account of this day. We're in Mark chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 1 through 22. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people, that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then? that I shall do unto him who ye call the king of the Jews. And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall, called the Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns, and put it about his head, and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed, and did spit upon him, and bowing their knees, worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him, and put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. And they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. What a passage of scripture to lay out what is happening as Jesus is making his way to the cross, to understand how he's put on the cross. But I want to bring in your hearing a couple of things. And one of those is is that it happened very early in the morning that the chief priests and the elders and the teachers and the whole Sanhedrin were making their plans. 
Those who devise to do wrong, they're not sleeping. They're not lazy. They're not hanging back. No, they're up early making their plans. And that should really shake some of us to the core. We're lazy with the truth of Jesus Christ. We're lazy with the power that he gives us. We just hold on to it and just kind of come and go as we please. We're not strategizing by looking the devil in the eyes and saying, you don't have any control of me. We're not getting up early in the morning and reading his word and getting our marching orders. We're not planning what we're going to do for Jesus. We kind of do it, come see, come saw. We'll do whatever happens. Or we might be in a rut and we do something just because it's habitual. Maybe we go to church regularly, but we don't go to church to praise and worship the Lord. We're just simply doing what we do. This scripture always reminds me that those who were doing wrong, those that were devising evil, they were up early. It also reminds me that Jesus was bound for us to make bonds easy for us. We have been bound with Jesus. And it's the only time you're going to be bound that you're free because we've been bound with him and he makes us free. When we look at this account, we see how absolutely eager the prosecutors were when they were prosecuting Jesus. And they had no proof. Their proof was so slim. It wasn't his guilt. He wasn't guilty of anything, but it was his goodness that they used as basically as a proof against him, right? It wasn't that he had done anything, anything scandalous like another criminal, but something that was so good the goodness in him that provoked them to prosecute him. And they prosecuted him with passion. And with you know, nothing to base it on. They just wanted rid of him. And, you know, sometimes the Jesus in us aggravates the devil and other people. And I think it's incredibly important for us to remember that and know that. Sometimes your presence, which ushers Jesus in because he lives in you, is enough to cause people to have a problem. I think it's really important, too, when we look at this passage to see that one sin led to another sin, which happens in all of our lives. But the crowd convinced Pilate to scourge Jesus, even though Pilate himself thought that Jesus was innocent. And then that crowd was very quickly able to convince Pilate to crucify him. One decision led to another bad decision. Sins multiply, sins mm. compound. That means that we have to be diligent. We learn lessons for what we have seen these people do, right? We have to be diligent to keep ourselves holy. We have to understand that just like we see with Pilate, one sin in our life can lead to another sin in our own lives, because it just takes us down a road. Our goal should be to separate ourselves from the sins of this world, to separate ourselves from the way that the world works, all the while with that goal of reaching the world for this Jesus that we read about, that we celebrate, even in these, this dark, dark account of this day. We're going to pick up our reading in Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 34. And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a subscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, 
seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt thou be with me in paradise. He was crucified. His hands and feet were nailed to the cross. As it was laying on the ground, they, they put him on there. And then they lifted it up. This is a painful and shameful death. On either side of him were two known thieves. The people knew who they were. They knew what they had done. They were of the worst criminal kind. They took his clothes. They cast them for lots as some kind of trophy. He was mocked. And he was treated beyond what our imagination and understanding can possibly fathom. Yet we as Christians, when we get in a crowd of people, who aren't saved, and they might laugh a little bit at us or look at us a little funny. It shuts us down. Look what he went through to give us our salvation. And the Bible says that he said he counted it joy because of his love for us. And what I want you to know that they wrote above his head, this is the king of the Jews, and they did it in mockery. But God intended it for a declaration of what he really was. He is the king of the Jews. And his cross is the way to the crown. They wrote it in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. And those who knew knowledge, those who were learned, they were the ones who knew these three learned language. And let me tell you, they need to know who Christ is. Christ is for everyone, the learned, the unlearned, the rich, the poor. It was for all men, for everyone. That's why it was written in all the languages. The gospel of Christ is for all people and should be preached to all nations. Jesus loves me, this I know, and the scriptures tell me so. Let's continue this account in the book of John. In John 19, verses 25 through 27, we read, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. Luke 23, 44 through 35. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And then Luke 19, 28 through 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. That was John nineteen twenty eight through 30. Luke twenty three forty six through 47. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And back to John chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there also came Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes, cloths with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. 
Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Luke twenty three fifty five and 56. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. And now we're going to go back to Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath come no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, who, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Oh, what a sacrifice. Heaven's best was given for us. Jesus gave his very best, his own life, to buy our pardon and our freedom. Surely the least we can do is live a life devoted to him. I just have to say thank you, Jesus, for loving me and making me part of your family through the shedding of your sinless, spotless blood that covers my sin. And you, my friend, too, can be thankful and grateful. If you know him as personal Savior, then today reflect on Good Friday and take time to thank God for giving you Jesus. If you don't know him as personal Savior, today is the day to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you have any questions about how to make Jesus your Savior, feel free to contact us at Woman at the Well Ministries. If you have any questions about how to live a life more devoted and dedicated to Him, it is our honor and our pleasure to work with you through the Holy Scriptures to develop an amazing personal relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Remember, you are loved. Jesus loves you. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing, and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. 
You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman at the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father. And it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the gospel group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved. to have.